You may ask yourself, I've blown up the Kill Rathi homeworld. Will I never again be permitted to wander the green hills of Confed space? Of course not. Wing Commander 3 proved so successful that Electronic Arts wanted a follow-up, and Chris Roberts, along with the rest of the crew at Origin, were more than happy to oblige. We're going to tell you all about the plot now, so if you're the kind of person who hates it when previews give away a movie storyline, you should click now and choose next from the pop-up menu. Still here? Okay. It turns out that the Confederation is not the shiny, happy, pan-galactic government we all thought it was. Wing Commander series Chris Roberts explains. So, you know, the Border Wolves are saying, you know, we want more rights, we want more rights. The Confederation is saying, um, you know, we're not ready to give them to you yet, and there's been escalating tensions on the frontiers over it. And um, what's been happening is that there's been actual attacks on Confederation ships and attacks on Border World ships, which is sort of provoking the Civil War. And, you know, you get into it and you find out that there's a third party behind all this trying to provoke a Civil War. And then, you know, the game boils down to you the Civil War. Mark Hamill returns as Colonel Christopher Blair. In the aftermath of the Tehran Kilrathi War, Blair has retired to live out his remaining years in bucolic bliss as a humble farmer. Alas, it isn't to be. In light of this new emergency threatening the Confederation, you, as Blair, are being recalled to active duty. Battle lines are drawn, but things aren't as black and white as they were in the days of roasting kitties. Along the way, you'll have to make tough moral choices, some pretty dramatic ones at that, which will definitely have an effect on how the story is resolved. So now, you're asking yourself, how did they crank this puppy out in less than a year when it took almost two years to create Wing 3? The answer is simply that they didn't have to reinvent the wheel this time around. Wing 4, for the most part, uses the same engine as its predecessor. That isn't to say that the programmers haven't been busy, however. We spent some time making the, uh, the engine faster, be able to show more faces, have more detail on the ships, have streaming digital audio out in space, um, just put more um, creative detail into, say, the ships, how they look, um, the explosions, all the sort of little polish aspects are a lot higher this time around. The flight elements of the game have also been enhanced with more detailed texture maps, digital streaming audio instead of MIDI music, and a cleaner, cockpitless view which runs in Super VGA. Although, due to the limits of our capturing equipment, this video is only standard VGA. The missions have also been designed to offer more strategic challenge and to better coordinate with the storyline. For example, on a mission to escort a bombing run, you could tell your escorts to hold back until you give the order to commence bombing. But don't take our word for it, check out the demo which you can download from the Origin website and which we hope to include on this episode of IE Space Permitting. Wing Commander 4 The Price of Freedom is due in stores for Christmas, so there's probably a copy within arm's reach of wherever you bought this copy of Interactive Entertainment. And beyond that... Right now we're in actual very serious discussions with Wing Commander movie, and part of the plan would be to do a Wing Commander movie and then shoot the footage for the next Wing Commander alongside it, and that would probably end up being Wing 5.